here. My grandfather had chicken coops in the back. We had rabbits, a full-blown garden in the back of this house. Um, and we're trying to keep them here. It's hard to hold on to your family and stay together when you're like this. We just thank you all for coming out and supporting us. It's really important to us to keep our house and our family together. This is when our family come out of town, they know to find somebody here at this house. So it's very important we hold this house dear to our heart. And we appreciate you all for coming out and supporting us. So my father is a veteran. He's a Purple Heart veteran. We applied for a VA loan. We got approval for 100%. We offered that loan to Nation Star. Nation Star refused that loan. The property went up in 2014. It went up to uh, auction. So when it went up to auction, Nation Star diverted it back to them for 290000 So at that point, when they diverted it back to the bank, they started calling us, asking us when we were going to move. Oh, well, they put a notice on the door from a law office saying that vacate or quit. When they gave us a three-day notice, that next day we did phone banking for two days. The second day, the realtor calls me, leaves a message on my phone. He said, Ned, can you get back into contact with me? It's um, very important. And he says, um, I, don't understand, I don't know what you've been doing, but it must be a good thing because um, the guy from uh, Nation Star Solution Star has called. They're willing to sell the property back. But this is the thing. They want to sell it back to you for 14. I say, huh? What? 410? They bought it for 290. Why would we buy it for 410? So I can't do it all by myself. I've been trying to do it all by myself, and it seems like I was getting a running around. And it's just not African American. It's white folks too, Mexicans, Chinese. I mean, you know, I mean, at some point in time, it's hurting everybody. The thing with being homeless is that you don't get to have a life. Once you're homeless, unless you get a home, you don't get unhomeless. We've had to stop looking for jobs due to lack of being able to shower. We need people to understand and be in our shoes for once and have some kind of compassion. Homeless people are, are, are treated very unfairly and severely discriminated against. I was staying with my aunt. She got evicted because we couldn't keep up the rent money. I end up getting fired. I fell into a deep depression. I just didn't have nowhere to go. And you know, I relapsed. I started using, I, started, I relapsed on Evron. Basically, we were basically homeless when we got here. Came out here with hopefully a promised job in San Fran and then nobody contacted him after we got here. And then we just kind of toughed it out. Um, we've been job searching, nothing's been going good. Basically set up camp. The first time uh, was when I got pregnant with him. His father broke my back when he was five months old. And I was put on bed rest by the doctor. I was a caregiver, so I was not able to take care of the people anymore. And I had nowhere to live, because that was my home. So I stayed at the shelters in Richmond, and then eventually I got a home in Lake County, and I moved up there. The water is bad in Lake County, and it made me sick. It made me really sick. I lost my home and had to come back down here to get health care. And I had nowhere to live when I got here. And that was in 2015. And I went through the process of trying to get a home and health care and raise a baby, homeless, and in a very bad domestic violence situation that was not ending. Um, I've been on the street, been homeless, because I was, or have been still, rebellious. Um, being a ex-addict, as in, um, Alcoholic, I mean, I was um, a heavy duty drinker and I liked to party too much. People didn't like that. Don't like authority, um, don't like to be abused mentally and physically by a parent, and so that's why I'm on the street. Well, I've been homeless since 96. My wife had passed away and my kids, all of them grew up. They all went their separate ways. And I was in Arkansas, so when we came back, I didn't see it. They would, uh, my mother-in-law for a while, and then my father-in-law passed away, and then my mother-in-law passed away in church, and then everybody like went their separate ways. It was 10 boys and five girls, so everybody had to fend for themselves. We have a sign that pretty much says anything helps. We go sit in the median from like 9 to 1.30, 9 to 2, and usually that gets us what we need to get for the day, food, whatever necessities we need. Our main goal every day is to try to make at least 35 bucks. Their dog food costs 20. The shelters would be like, they don't allow you to have pets. They sometimes separate you from your partner. 
And that's one of our things is we're not gonna go to a shelter because we have our babies and we don't ever separate. We've had to stop looking for jobs due to lack of being able to shower. So that's kind of stopping us in our tracks until we can figure out, do we really wanna make this hike a couple miles that way to take a 15 minute shower? One of us stand outside to the point where one of us might not get a shower because of the time frame. You know, we can't take the dogs, you know, and the transportation with the whole bus and the dog thing is, it's understandable, but I wish people would put in perspective, you know, sometimes people have th animals and they can't go places. My day is different because I'm a mechanic and I have a lot of customers coming to check their cars because they can't afford it taking the dealership, so I do it for them. And with my business, I serve this community and the city sterilized this like a, a community people could walk down this sidewalk. So they moved us all across, across the street. And right now, they didn't even want me to stay on the street. How can they say I'm trust that? I mean, I found on the bottom line to protect my country, okay? And I got hurt protecting my country, and the judge tell me I'm trust that. You mean to tell me I can't live on the streets of America, their country that I'm willing to give my life for? I'm not asking for a mission, you know what I'm saying? But just some place to live. And that's not asking too much, I don't think. Getting up in the morning, being a homeless person, you know, you have to find somewhere to go to the bathroom. Um, how are you going to get from point A to point B when you don't have any source of money? Um, then you got to figure out where you're going to go get food. Cleaning up your mess when you first get up because you don't want people judging you, yelling at you, and then calling the cops on you because people do call the cops on you when you're homeless. You know, some people have mental health issues and we have to deal with that too. Me, myself, and I, I have mental health issues too. It gets very, very hard and very emotional. You gotta have a hustle because you on the streets, but you know everybody need cash, everybody need food. Some people panhandle, some people uh, collect cans. I would panhandle. When I come out of my tent, I notice the people who are taking part in the gentrification in this area staring at us. It really offends me. I think that is bullshit that they raise the rent in this area. I think it's bullshit that for 20 years they tell you you can't leave the city, you on probation. And now all of a sudden it's get the fuck out. It's like, what the hell is that about? For the longest of time, they told me I couldn't leave. And now it's just leave and then don't want to give you a place to go. The encampment that I live in is, it's interesting, we self-created it. It was an accident. I have to fight rats, big, humongous rats coming in here all night. It's, it's 20 degrees lower in there than it is at night outside. So I gotta keep my child covered all night long and fight the rats. They were living in our bed. 16 rats were in that bed. The thing with being homeless is that you don't get to have a life. You don't get to make progress. You don't get to go to bed on time every night or wake up every morning or take a shower or use a bathroom and get back to normal or what normal is. And then at night you gotta fight to stay alive. Hope to God that the pneumonia that you guys have today isn't gonna kill you overnight. Or that your child won't run into a busy street. So you have to worry about the people out there that aren't getting the mental health services that they need walking into your RV in the middle of the night and killing you. You, get, you gotta worry about the police taking your home or your child screaming his head off and people thinking you're beating him. <laughs> He doesn't get to go to school and play and socialize. He doesn't have friends because he's on the streets. He grows up around homeless people. You don't get to exist. They shunned me out of my life because of my choices in life, because I chose to be on the street, because I became an alcoholic, then a drug addict. So they told me that they don't want nothing to do with me until I clean up my act. It's hard because I live on the street. I have nobody in my life. I barely even have my 10-year-old son in my life because he knows the choices that I've made in my life. And that hurts. It hurts a lot. It kills me. I've been going through one of the worst domestic violence situations I think anybody's ever gone through, and I don't exaggerate. And I have had to stay away from my family for a very long time so that they don't get hurt by it. And in the long run, what it comes down to is I love my family. This is hell. I don't want my family to be affected by this. They can't help me. All I know is for eight years, I've been stuck in hell. Three of them on the streets with a baby. I would have thought that the world would have noticed by now and stopped it. I love my family. My child doesn't even have friends, much less cousins. He has tons of cousins, and he doesn't even know them. Do we have family? Do we get to see them? Mm -mm. Okay, 
I think the best thing that's needed to transition from the streets into regular housing is more one-on-one -on -one counseling. Yeah, I really feel like they should uh, put the word out more about different programs. If I knew about all the programs in Oakland and everywhere I can go get housing at and everywhere I can go every day to go work on my house, like I would totally be doing that. And hygiene is really important. I walked around really depressed. Yeah, I ain't showered in a week. There needs to be like some place where we can go clean ourselves, man. I think a lot of services are needed around depression. I don't know, therapists, psychologists, it's a lot of mentally ill people that are not getting the appropriate help. I need help with whatever you can help me with, I will take it. I'm not talking about me having my own place as in a studio or apartment or a house. I'm talking about therapy, medication, counseling, because I don't want to mess up going into my own place that I'm going to rent or own. I need to get right and I need to get straight. I need to be drug free. I want to be an ex-drug addict. Being able to have maybe a way to get like laundry tokens to go do laundry, that and uh, a way to get clothes, like a, like a clothes pantry type thing, to go and you know, get a certain amount of clothes. I live right out in front of my office in uh, this RV. I've been doing this for about seven months now. Uh, when I first came up here, I moved into a house with some friends. After living there for a year, our house disbanded, and I decided uh, I made the choice to buy an RV and live in it. I wanted to uh, put myself into a better financial situation. So far, it's uh, served to be a greatly rewarding lifestyle decision, uh, given a lot of the uh, housing pressures in this area. I am an advocate for it, that this can be a solution for a lot of other types of people uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's very, it's a cheap lifestyle. It doesn't require a lot of upkeep costs. It's pretty cozy in my opinion. People are struggling right now. Uh, it gives them an option. It gives them a solution to their problem. It allows them to take matters into their own hands to some degree, to own their own home. And I think it also serves the community very well because it doesn't force the community to have to build a lot of low middle income housing in a time when every square foot of real estate in this area is potentially worth uh, a lot of money. There's really effective ways to write the laws and I think there are a lot of creative solutions about where these people can stay and if some basic amenities could be provided you know here's where you can uh, dump your wastes, here's where you can get your fresh water uh, for a marginal cost, something along the lines of like you pay utilities at a house. I think those types of solutions, uh, if thought about carefully and uh, enacted correctly, could uh, greatly improve the sense of community and could reduce the amount of stress and negativity that comes with uh, the looming idea of this rising uh, housing situation. I grew up in this part of the city. I've observed a lot of messed up things. You know, people are just treating us treating us bad. They're discriminating against us. That's their answer to it, discrimination. But every day you still have to keep trying. You give us a home and watch us fly. There's a lot of um, red tape going around and around and around. But we believe we got rights. and. We're hoping that um, we get people to listen to us and to understand. No, we're not bad people. We just, everybody needs a little bit of help somewhere. And if you can assist them in getting that help, I'm pretty sure most of us will take it. This isn't what we want to do. This isn't a choice, but this is the only way to be at the point at this moment.